This week on LTC News, Lowell House gives us an inside look at their new Jackson Street facility. A place that really could help people cook for themselves and cook in a healthy way. We learn about canal rights. In 1986, the state of Massachusetts park system basically uh, purchased uh, the air rights over the canals, um, all of the kind of gatehouses, the historic structures. And highlights from the 2019 African Festival. All this and much more on this edition of LTC News. Welcome to LTC News. I'm your host, Krista Brown. On June 15th, African culture took over the Sampus Pavilion for the 19th annual African Festival. A variety of vendors encircled the stage where members of the African community showcased their talents, demonstrating what makes Lowell such a diverse and vibrant city. Why do you think festivals are so important to the communities? The newest wave of immigrants that we've had have come from the African continent. You know, it's important for them to get together. It does two things. First of all, I think it draws people into the city who wouldn't otherwise come into Lowell, but also, too, it provides a social setting for people that do live here, and it also gives other people that don't have ancestry from uh, from the African continent to, to become more familiar with that culture and the differences in that culture, and that's part of what being a melting pot is all about. Very true. And what does it do for Lowell to have all of these cultural festivals? It's not only because of the great food and the music and the art that's here, but it's really about sharing of our cultures. And when you think of Lowell, Lowell's a gateway city, and you talk about its diversity being its strength. Well, on a day like this, it shows truly that it is the strength of the city. The favorite part of the festival is the music, authentic African music and dance. And also the African regalia. Like you see behind me here, we have the African Roots Band t-shirts. We also have attire from Africa. So people can come and take up, you know, sample out some stuff from Africa. It's great. So tell me a little bit about your tent. We are the African Community Center of Lowell. And uh, we are a non-profit organization in the city of Lowell. So basically what we do is we engage uh, African immigrants that are coming to the city of Lowell. There are some who come from Francophone countries who don't speak English, they speak French. We we help them learn English. Uh, we do after-school programs for the kids. Uh, we're just basically helping uh, the typical immigrant family settle or integrate into the city of Lowell. Well, this diversity every year, each ethnic group, they're trying to hold on to their culture by having this put together this event so that their children, the children of their children remember where they come from, but also to show the rest of the city that we are diverse and that's what our strength and we should use that to you know, to do our work, solve our problem in the city. So I, I think I'm, I'm happy to be here. Like the food, the entertainment, and all that they're doing. Like, look at that. It's all like a happy jamming thing. You can watch extended highlights of the festival on Channel 8. Check our online schedule for details. June 23rd marked the 150th anniversary of the Elliott Presbyterian Church. In celebration of this milestone, the church hosted a block party where community members were able to enjoy fun activities such as live music and a potluck lunch. We spoke with members of the congregation about the church and Reverend Katie Doss, who highlighted the diversity and inclusivity that makes Elliott Presbyterian so unique. Hi, I'm Heather Doss. I am the pastor here at the Elliott Presbyterian Church. We are celebrating our 150th anniversary today. This congregation is really the daughter of the First Presbyterian Church that was founded uh, on June 23rd, 1869. Today, 150 years later, we are a congregation that is about one third uh, African, mostly West African, one third Cambodian, and one third people of European heritage. All my family and I heard that there's a lot of Cambodian refugee in Lower, so we decided to move. During that time when I came, they were very supportive. They learned that there were refugee 
uh, right and lower. They would brought us uh, some food, canned food and youth furniture, and then they brought us uh, to church. I thought that was very welcoming from, uh, from what um, they did to us because I didn't realize that people are caring about refugees. The Presbytery is the three northern New England states plus this slice of northern Massachusetts. And here in Lowell is a church I've not visited before. Today is the 150th anniversary of the founding of the Presbyterian Church in Lowell. And I was invited and pleased to attend and celebrate with this multicultural, spectacular congregation. And we're really striving to be a church that is a church of open doors where all kinds of people are welcome, no matter your ethnic background, no matter your age or your generation, no matter economic status. But it's particularly um, heartwarming if you, when you come to a congregation or a group of people or community where you're welcomed, where you can be you, where you can sing as you were taught to sing, where your accent doesn't matter, your, the color of your skin doesn't matter, the size that you can I mean, the shape doesn't matter. It, it brings us so much joy to, to be part of this whole um, Elliot uh, uh, mindset and, and philosophy. And that's the tradition we're continuing today. We continue to strive for equity in our leadership and in our worship and to continually be welcoming new people, to see what are the communities that are on the margins of Lowell today, even if they're not ethnic communities, if they're economically on the margins or on the margins in some other way. How do we say you're welcome here and you're not on the margins here? You're part of the center. Uh, and, and that's the witness that we want to carry forth into the world in the years ahead. I hope for another 150 years and beyond. Lowell House has been helping recovering addicts in Lowell since 1971 with great success. To better serve their clients, they recently moved into a larger space on Jackson Street. We spoke with Bill Garr, Executive Director of Lowell House, about the organization and its future goals. Our agency has always been right at the center of treating addiction disorders, the full range of whether it's just addiction to drugs, addiction, addiction to alcohol, and about 52% of the people we serve also have an addiction to alcohol, uh, but also gambling and other addictions and uh, really treating it in a way that we can comprehensively deal with the life changes that are necessary, the housing, the job pieces, all of the things that, that people need. So it's really a full continuum of both residential services. Uh, and we begin with people right after they finish detox and right after they get it out of their system for the first time. And then ultimately, we go and help them maintain a lifetime of recovery because Addiction and addiction to substances and substance use disorder is a lifetime disease and it is a disease because it affects people's brains and ultimately brains learn how to become addicted and once they learn that, they learn it for a lifetime. Right. We were in Merrimack Street, we've been there for about 20 years, but it was a building that really needed a lot of work and very trauma producing for our, our clients and for our staff. Uh, it was hard to find your way around, it had leaky pipes, had bad roof. So we decided at one point, our clients and people we serve, our families, our staff really deserve more. And we began in the path of really building a new center, a center devoted to addiction treatment and recovery called the Center for Integrated Treatment and Recovery. Being in the health center, and that's where our new center is located actually, so you can literally walk from our facility right into the fourth floor of the health center, integrating your primary care, integrating your allied health services, integrating all your health care, while we continue here to support trauma-informed care and ultimately the ability of people to change their lifestyles to a more productive and healthy lifestyle. And can't we all use a healthier lifestyle? If you look down here, you'll see some of the paintings that we have, and these are all drawings, paintings, and some stuff exceptionally good uh, from people that are in recovery. Almost 90% of the people we have that we treat have trauma in their background, significant traumatic incidents in their lives that keep repeating and repeating and begin to interfere with what they do and how they can function. So ultimately, we try to design a building that minimizes the effects of that trauma. But we wanted to make sure that our uh, waiting room really made people feel comfortable. Uh, so we have our TV up here that uh, no, no CNN, no news programs, just interesting information, interesting films about people in addiction, and our beautiful plant. And it's all real. People don't think it's real, so I'm going to go up and touch it and tell you that it's, it is real. Hey? Here we go. 
have a little piece of rubber plant. So we said, how about a, a place that really could help people cook for themselves and cook in a healthy way, could exercise on a regular basis and do all the things that we need to do to maintain a healthy lifestyle. We're going to open basically a new recovery center called the Recovery Cafe. That will help people during the day maintain their recovery and learn strategies about ways they can resist recovery and grow their lives and, and be positive and have another family to join. If you know someone struggling with addiction, you can reach out to Lowell House at 978-459-8656. Lowell's extensive canal system is one of the defining features of the city, but who actually owns it? It's not as simple as you may think. We spoke with representatives of the three entities that share ownership, starting with Christopher Hardy, who works with NL, a private electric power company. NL Green Power is first and foremost a, a generator of electricity, uh, and so our primary mission is uh, generating hydropower. The water column is our responsibility. The water that passes through and maintaining uh, the aesthetic appearance of that canal so that we can enable the, the flow of water to supply uh, the turbines that are located in the powerhouses. The uh, State Department of Conservation and Recreation, which is an agency of uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, owns uh, a number of the historic buildings and gatehouses and dam structures. In 1986, the state of Massachusetts park system, basically, uh, what's now called the DCR, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, purchased uh, the air rights over the canals. Um, all of the kind of gatehouses, the historic structures, although nothing to do with the operation of the canals, that's still owned by the power company. And it also purchased the recreation rights on the canals, meaning that it can sail boats on it, it can allow people to put boats on it, and so forth. Lowell National Historical Park also has a lot of easements. The Lowell National Historical Park keeps the water clean with help of volunteers, and they operate historical boat tours on the canals. Each of the different entities has a different mission and a different purpose. So Enel Green Power is a company and they are, uh, their, their business is to use the canals for power production. That's not the, the same kind of interest that the National Park has in making sure that the walls are preserved to uh, uh, preserve that history, that story, uh, the story of the workers that are building those canals. Uh, and that's different a bit than uh, DCR as well, who is really, they're really charged with uh, making sure that these things can be preserved for their recreational benefit uh, to the city and to the uh, residents and, and to visitors of Lowell. So those are very different things that each of the entities is trying to accomplish. Uh, and it requires a very delicate kind of balancing act between all of their interests uh, and also a tremendous amount of cooperation and working in partnership to just, just try to get something as simple as removing the vegetation from uh, the canal walls. Knowing that it's still you know, a functioning canal system, which a lot of people don't realize, either living, working, or even visiting here. You know, it's a five and a half mile system, still producing hydroelectric power today, which presents its own challenges within a tourist or a visitor setting as well. We all have different missions, if you will, and different styles of budgets and different uh, incentives. And sort of the alignment of these incentives, uh, you know, is important because, you know, the canal system is a defining feature of the city of Lowell. It, it's not just a conduit for lumber uh, and agricultural projects as it was once designed in the uh, late 18th century, and it's no longer uh, spinning looms uh, to generate textile. It's now uh, an important feature of Lowell's economy. It's downtown development. Many thanks to our talented intern, Gautier Kunstler, for producing this piece. In this week's Sunspot, Lowell Sun Enterprise Editor Chris Scott sits down with Tuch Van, Outreach Coordinator for the Cambodian Mutual Assistance Association, and a plaintiff in the Hewitt et al. versus City of Lowell election lawsuit. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Scott, the Enterprise Editor at The Sun, continuing with our series of Sunspot guests. With me uh, this week is Tooch Van. Tooch, thanks for coming in. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> You're, very You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I didn't give you a lot of notice. No. I think I called you Monday, and you're here on Tuesday, so I appreciate that. Yes, uh, no problem. Pleasure. So uh, Tooch is here this, this week to talk about uh, a very high-profile subject that has played out in the city over the last few months, and that's the voting rights lawsuit. Tooch is one of 11 or 12 original plaintiffs that Correct. took the city yeah. to court to change the way the city elects its city council and school committee members. 
Mm -hmm. And a federal judge recently signed off on an out-of-court settlement between the city and the plaintiffs. So Tooch, tell us why you got involved in this case and what was your original objective and, and what is the overall objective of the uh, Yeah, I mean, the, the reason I got involved uh, a couple of folds, uh, I think uh, I believe in social justice. I believe in the, uh, um, um, uh, to get everybody involved. Uh, and because uh, law is uh, 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 very diverse, mm -hmm. and then I think uh, diversity is one of the, the uh, uh, one of the stre uh, strengths of law. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 so I believe that if we can uh, change the uh, the electoral uh, electoral vote, uh, uh, the current uh, electoral electoral vote is di that um, have a voter dilute problems mm -hmm. and so with uh, we we'll just if we can change to uh, favor for uh, all people uh, voters who have opportunity fairly equally uh, for all people mm -hmm. all backgrounds mm -hmm. that's what I that's why I signed in uh, you know and then I s also it's a work uh, I believe that uh, if we can get people involved the more all the neighborhood involved the um, uh, vote and and that, that make our city greater. We we were talking off air about sure. other other men, um, mostly Cambodians, who've gone on to be elected here in Lowell. We we mentioned Rithi Young. Sure. We mentioned Vesna Noon. We mentioned um, Roddy Mom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like the city has has been void of any diversity mm -hmm. in its in its elected in some mm -hmm. of its elected posts. But do you feel that that the way those Pe the, the way we elect people here in Lowell is broken. Did it need to be fixed or did it just need to be tweaked a little bit? Just need to be tweaked a little bit. I mean, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, water, I mentioned the water that diluted uh, were not uh, um, our current system. And then the, the, uh, the, the, uh, what we want, we want uh, to uh, the city, uh, Change uh, currently to change to um, to uh, we we propose uh, six options mm -hmm. and all these six options will 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 currently to be fair uh, uh, and an equal uh, uh, voting opportunity for all colleges. Now correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but there are four that are on the table. Yeah. Right. There yeah. are four. We that propose are six, but and, and, uh, and yeah. then yeah. then they will be narrowed down to two. Yes. Yes. And then yes. the city council will ultimately select one. Yes. We'll select and put the either in the, the ballot on. Uh, yeah. Right yeah, now, yeah. what is your preferred option? Well, what, I, how how would you like to see it done? Personally, I it's all all of them that will be, will be current to to be fair mm -hmm. and equal, and and I. You must I, have a favorite though. I have a favor, but <laughs> you can tell I, us your favor. Yes, certainly. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, um, uh, right now, I, um, we, I'm plan to involve with the uh, community to let the community weigh in, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, I'm, I'm personally, uh, um, I like to hear what's going on and to get all the residents involved and the inputs, mm -hmm. and then uh, so they can weigh in. What, what are the four, op the, the four options? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right now, you'd rather not tell rather us. Rather not tell but, it. Yes, okay. yeah. But I, 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 I believe in in general, it all the all the pro, uh, proposed options. Mm -hmm. It's 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 going to be any one of them would, any one of them you'd be happy with. Although you do have a, a favorite. I I will be happy with it, any with, one okay. of them. All right. So I've worked here in the city, yes, and certainly. I've covered city hall for many many years. And sure. it seems that um, compared to twenty or thirty years ago interest in city elections, primarily for city council and school committee, was very high. Mm -hmm. You'd have many, many candidates, three or four dozen candidates running for city council or mm -hmm. for school committee, and every year there's, a, there's less and less interest. And I think at the last count there were maybe 54,000 or maybe 55,000 registered voters, yeah. but only a fraction right. of that number actually go to the polls. Mm -hmm. How do you think changing the way that these folks get elected will increase the number of people that, that go? I think number one, we'll, we'll try to get people involved in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in um, the uh, public and the uh, 
uh, the, the ed uh, education with options to mm -hmm. get them involved, and then to, uh, so they when they understand it in the process, so they they will tend to participate. It. So that's that. I, I think uh, that the key thing is uh, to to have the uh, 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 people, all all the neighborhood and the residents to uh, to uh, involve in the uh, uh, comprehensive education uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, outreach. In India, you know, and, and and I think they, I mean, you you mentioned about it, uh, not uh, um, um, people not interested in it come out to vote, and then uh, um, that's that because they're not involved or, or they, they they don't believe it in 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 in, in the governments, you know, because they oh that's the people or we elected the same people and those kind of things, you know. So do you think they'll become? There'll, there'll be more believability. I I, I believe so. Okay. I believe so. If we if 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 a nonprofit uh, work with the city and work uh, as a community as activists like us work with the city to put a comprehensive uh, education plan and to get them involved uh, uh, in different neighborhoods, different communities involved, that is, I think uh, uh, will be better. Off air, we we're talking a little bit sure. about Belvedere, the, the city's most affluent neighborhood that really gets out to vote mm -hmm. every couple years. Uh, we talked about its influence on the high school vote. Right. And then there's the Highlands as well, yeah. um, a very politically active neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, if you looked at, um, I think, the, the folks who are on the city council now, many of them are either from Belvedere, the Highlands, and there's some from Pawtucketville, right. maybe a couple of other yeah. places. Yeah. But do you think if, that there were, if there were other neighborhoods specifically represented through changing the system, Say there, there had to be a counselor from the Acre, or there had to be a counselor from the neighborhood where you live, right. South Lowell, South Lowell Sacred yeah. Heart. Yeah. Do you think that that would trigger more interest in those specific neighborhoods, so those overall voter numbers would come up? I certainly believe mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, well, the key is we get uh, we get uh, people involved, and then they and when they got they feel ownership, and then they can, uh, especially the uh, let's say if they get involved, and then they uh, they uh, they interested in, and then they choose their own candidate who live in the in the neighborhood, uh, so they will be, uh, that will be going to be different, and then will be uh, a great for city of law, mm -hmm. you know. Now, uh, you're one of what eleven plaintiffs, or is it twelve? Uh, uh, tw uh, uh, tw uh, yeah, uh, uh, right now 11 because drop out two. Okay, yeah. two yeah. dropped out? Yeah. So some guy called, called me the other day at The Sun. Yeah. He was anonymous and he sure. said that, um, you know, the newspaper ought to do a story on the, on the, on the plaintiffs. Right, right, right. And look at who the plaintiffs are, where they live, Certainly. and do they vote. Yes. Okay. And we've kind of picked at that piecemeal of the paper. Sure. but. Perhaps in the future we could do a story Certainly. looking at every single one. But you, I can only talk to you. You're sitting here in front of me. You live in Sacred Heart. Yes. Right. You vote. I always vote. You I always vote. I always involve. I always help with the community uh, member who run it. You know, I was help support. Uh, I'm not run myself, mm -hmm. but uh, I help support for who run it because I believe in the. Government system, I believe, in the, to get involved in the civic engagement. That's what uh, I believe from the bottom of my heart. Okay, I know you can't. You, I'm not going to uh, ask sure, you to identify ahead, all the other plaintiffs, sure. but do all the other plaintiffs vote? I believe do they, they all, do. Do they all I live in they, do. Uh, they, they, they all in low. Uh, they, they all live in low. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Th yeah. I should have asked that first. Yeah. So sure. they all live in low. Yeah. Just do they all vote? Are they all as active? Um, I I believe they 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 all w uh, vote. Yeah. You can see where someone. Could raise an issue with that. Right. I mean, certainly, signing I know, on as I a plaintiff, yeah. and then if you don't vote, yeah. then why are you doing it? It's certainly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I understand, and, and they are concerned. I am honored they are concerned because it, if you uh, you 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 sign as a plaintiff and you not vote, you not uh, model yourself mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. You know. No. Now I asked you again off air. Sure. We, we, I always have good conversations with my guests off sure. air as well as on air. How about you? Why don't you run for school committee? Why don't you run for city council? Oh, you're yeah. the outreach coordinator at the Cambodian Mutual Assistance right. Association. You're yeah. very active. Yeah. It seems like to me, boy, you'd be a natural, but yeah, that's yeah, not that's yeah, not yeah, in the cards for, for you, right? Well, I I would love to. Maybe eventually I might, uh, but uh, right now it's a twofold. Uh, one is that my kids are still still young. You have two boys, right? Two boys and ten and. Uh, 
uh, seven mm -hmm. and very active. And I, Did they uh, go to low public schools? They got uh, they they right now they, they go into uh, the charter schools. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, but I adopted two daughters who are going to uh, uh, low public school. They mm -hmm. are freshmen uh, 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 low public school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but they, you know, and then so they still need my time there. And then, but uh, uh, and uh, I will, you know, we don't. I believe in uh, we. Well, people, a lot of people running, so they, I, I support people to run, but uh, also, you know, like, I, 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 I believe I love to work as an advocate and in the community organizing and to make, uh, you know, uh, strong, uh, to make our community stronger. I believe that it, it, there's so many things that we can do mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for now. You Tell know? me, as, as the outreach coordinator from the CMAA, yeah. um, you were telling me that that the association plans to get involved in this moving forward and trying to get involved in some public education efforts, correct? Correct, correct, correct. I believe uh, Savannah Poe is, is our executive exec director. Yeah, executive director, and then he, uh, he, he have a meeting with other nonprofit representative, and, uh, and, and he will, the nonprofit folks and the community members, and then try to work with the city to put the comprehensive uh, uh, public education uh, to the communi mm -hmm. communities. And so to answer your question, he, yes, he, he tried Do to you do anticipate uh, having some focus groups or having some public meetings where people can come and hear, you know, hear presentations? Certainly. On, on these are the four proposals? Certainly, the four certainly. four concepts? Yeah, yeah, and then have uh, people to speak and then try to explain more. Because right now it's a, uh, I hear the the vibe that the, some a little bit confusing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the folk, uh, with the the four options and so what. But they how put the, the, a great block. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> I, great. <laughs> he, I've had him on too. <laughs> it, 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 it's clarify all that that, mm -hmm. that thing. And but of course, yeah, there is uh, uh, a little misunderstanding here and there. And that's that's what I hope that the uh, education public education system will help them. So either focus group, but we will have a plenary group as well. You know, you you're and talk multiple language. Oh, of course. So, uh, the uh, Khmer and uh, Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. You talk, you talk about con some confusion yeah. on, on the four options, but do you get this? How long have you lived in Lowell now? I live in Lowell uh, 20 years. Wow, yeah. okay. You've been around for a long time. Yeah. Do you get the sense that there's some resentment from some of the folks who lived in Lowell for for longer than you have and that have been involved in city yes, government for a yes. long time, e either uh, very involved up front or t tangentially yes. involved, that they don't like being told how to, uh, how, how to elect folks. D do you feel that resentment at all in your, in your daily travels? Uh, what, uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, um, do, do you feel that, um, that there were some older Lowellians yeah. who really are upset with this Legal action, mm. and and are saying maybe you know, under underneath their breath, oh, those sons of a gun. I you know, they, <laughs> who are they to tell us, and who's this federal judge to tell us how to elect city councilors and school committee members? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there is uh, some people some bad feelings, I guess. Bad feeling and disagree, you know. But I believe uh, um, uh, the uh, if we can uh, uh, change the electoral system. Uh, uh, and will will benefit to all people from background, uh, and that that would be the beauty of the diversity mm -hmm. is, and then uh, you know, and and that 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 is low about you know, and I I, I believe it's a settlement will help low to a better place, that you know, and 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 when they see the example like that, they probably they change their mind, you know. It, 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 uh, you know, whoever uh, disagree with this. Oh yeah, yeah, they're out there. <laughs> they say always this yeah, people right, disagree, right. but we, I'm, I'm happy to talk to them and, and help you to uh, 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 res respect their opinion uh, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, in wrapping up, what is a better place? You mentioned Lowell would be a better place. Mm -hmm. Is a, is a better place uh, more diversity on the city council and on the elect, school elect, committee? Elective, elect, elected mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. City councilor and school committee. Yeah. What about all the regulatory boards, though? You have the planning board and the ZBAs and the and the conservation commissions and the board of health. That's um, you guys ought to be looking at, at at the membership on 
on those certainly, boards and commissions certainly. as well. That's, uh, I honor that what you comment. I mean, the, I, I strongly recommend it. And, and, then, uh, and that's, that's, that's what I hope. That's what I hope that when we got the people involved, and then, then they also volunteer to serve on their different uh, commissions and different boards. I mean, the, and don't have to run. <laughs> Right. I mean, uh, I mean, is hard. You, you, you run it's hard. It's a lot of work. A lot of work and then a lot of time. You got to raise all money. Yeah, and then raise, I'm not good with the fundraising <laughs> money. <laughs> I love to support, but it's yeah. not. It. Uh, and then so, I mean, for example, right now I'm still on the uh, homeless. Uh, um, Hunger Homeless Commission? And, yeah, Hunger Homeless Commissions. And I, I want to encourage others, my, 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 my communities, uh, to... Uh, to, uh, to, to volunteer and serve and to volunteer to get involved you know, with the city government, with the community, and with the temple, with the, their community. So that's, that's my mission in life, Chris. And, and I, if I can encourage other people to do it. I mean, I, I, I came here as very little. I have nothing, but I have opportunity uh, to go to very good schools. I went to Trinity College, went to Tuff. Uh, the Fletcher School and come back to work in Middlesex. Now I work uh, with the CMAA and then university. And so I, my mission in life is to get people involved and then give back. Well, perhaps if you're successful yeah. it, in getting more people on the city, uh, more diversity, I yeah. should say, on the city council and on the school committee yeah. than some of those other boards and commissions yeah. and, and, other, and nonprofits and things like that, that will follow. We'll have to see. Yes. But that will be a long process. That's a long process, but yeah. the, the journey beginning, <laughs> I would say. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. Well, I appreciate thank it. thank you, Chris. Yep. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Everyone, thank you for tuning in to this latest edition of Sunspot. Um, our guest has been Tooch Van, one of the original plaintiffs in the voting rights lawsuit. You can tune in in another couple of weeks, and we'll have someone else on. Thank you very, thank you very much, and have a good night. And that's all for this edition of LTC News. You can find us on LTC channels 8 and 99, online at ltc.org, on Roku in the LTC News playlist, or on Facebook at LTC Lowell. We leave you now with the sights and sounds of the Midsummer Night's Dream Festival. I'm your host, Krista Brown. Thanks for joining us.